Apparently, a new rule has been opposed upon Democratic members. That rule, which is written nowhere, is that our members must get at least 16 Republican Point of signatures. order has been called, Mr. Cano. This is the rule book. Let's uh, not say that again, or I'll take away your speaking privilege to finish. Please continue. I'll take away your privilege. Well, in the Arizona House, Republicans are already taking things away. What you just heard is the Arizona Republican speaker using a parliamentary maneuver known as a point of order to interrupt a Democrat. The Democrat was complaining about Republicans whipping out a new unwritten rule to kneecap Democrats. The rule, confirmed by several Republicans, is that no bill can be put to the vote of the full House unless... 16 of the Republican 31 members, a majority of the majority, sign a paper agreeing to bring the bill to the floor. It does not matter if a bill breezes through a House committee with bipartisan support. It doesn't matter if a supermajority of the Arizona House's 60 members support the bill. The Democrats have been told that if they cannot get 16 of the chamber's 31 Republicans to sign the paper, the bill will not get a vote. After being interrupted, Democrat O'Connor tried to make his point again. Apparently, there is a new agreement that has been forced upon Democratic members. This agreement is that members must get at least 16 Republican signatures on one of these green sheets. Point of order has been called. Can you do this without saying something with a different word that uh, gets another point of order called? Because if you cannot, I'm going to tell you right now, we're done. I'll let you try one more time. You can move on or you can just stop. But if you have to say that, you got to stop. Ah, uh, yes. Another parliamentary tactic to derail the Democrats' complaint. Apparently, certain words are forbidden by Arizona Republicans, so the speaker gets to keep interrupting the Democrats. Representative O'Connell, though, tried one more time. We are here as Democratic members to be taken seriously. Our votes will not be taken for granted. And we will absolutely rise together to demand better of this institution that has a one vote majority and what we are asking for in this chamber in the democratic caucus is respect equity and an ability to seek common ground and work together if that is a concern that has to be point of ordered then that is an internal reflection that members should make on their own what we are saying today is that to put these additional restrictions on members that make it nearly impossible. Because you know what we were told to get to 16 votes today? We were told to wait in line and we're, saying, we're told, I'll be the 16th signature. Come to me when you have 15 signatures. All of this is the newest front in the Cold War between Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs and the Republican-run legislature. Republicans are steamed that Hobbs keeps vetoing bills passed on Republican party line votes. The governor's power to veto bills is actually written in the Arizona Constitution. And so far this year, Hobbs has vetoed 14 bills. 13 of them were budget bills rammed through on Republican party line votes. Now contrast that with the House's power to veto democracy, rejecting the principle that a majority should rule and replacing it with one that requires Republicans to rule. Well, that is written nowhere and it is unwritten because it is so undemocratic. And so it goes in Arizona's legislature. Republicans with their one vote majority in each chamber are still whining about the fact that they lost the governor's mansion. And so the ultra conservative Arizona Freedom Caucus is cooking up crazy schemes and annoying schemes to ensure that nothing can pass without the far right's approval. Well, as a few political observers in Arizona have noted, perhaps it is time for the Democratic governor Hobbs to suddenly impose a rule that she will not sign any bill that does not have a majority of the minority or 15 of the 29 Democrats showing their approval. Of course, that would be absurd and undemocratic and it would be just easier all around if Republicans grew up and did their jobs. Is that too much to ask even in Arizona? Tell me what you think in the comment section. And by the way, in Washington, Republicans are getting blasted there for smearing President Biden's late son, Bo Biden, who died of cancer in 2015. You can check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.